Hey guys, here are my predictions for 2019 AQA Chemistry Paper 2. Now my predictions for last year's paper were actually really, really good. So the people that downloaded that and did that paper, they got a massive boost. If you want to download the predicted paper that goes with this video, then that's available for immediate download from my website. But it is really, really important that you should revise absolutely everything. I am not an examiner. I do not have any insider secrets. I do not know exactly what is going to be on the exam. I'm not giving anything away by making this video or writing the paper because I don't know exactly what is going to be on the exam. So please revise everything. Now we know that practicals are only 15% of your grade. And the practical that came up in last year's paper, chromatography, the examiner said that students weren't very familiar with it, that they didn't really understand it, that they couldn't answer the questions very well. Last year you were given a method and you were given a picture and you were asked what was wrong with it. What was wrong with the way that they'd done it? And we know that just learning the methods from the practical guide isn't going to be enough to get you those marks anymore. So when I was writing this year's predictive paper, I took all of that on board and I've written some questions that will hopefully really, really prepare you for what's going to come up in this year's exam. There is an old favourite practical that comes into chemistry paper too, and that is rates of reaction. This used to come up every other year on the old specification and there are lots and lots of different things they can ask you about this. There are lots of ways they can put this into new and novel situations, which is a big thing they have to do. There are lots of ways they can link the 20% maths requirement into this, and there are lots of ways they can make this a nice six mark question. So that is one that I really, really like. However, there is a new practical that we didn't really have in the old specification about water purification. So they could decide to test that one to see how well teachers are capable of teaching something new. We know that 20% of the chemistry marks have to come from math skills. And this could be maths anywhere in the specification. Now chemistry paper one had the maths topic in, it was very, very maths heavy. But that doesn't mean we shouldn't expect any math in chemistry paper too. For example, they could relate it to a practical, they could relate it to things like combustions or organic chemistry. There are lots of different ways in there they can relate the math specification or the math and science specification to the chemistry specification. For six mark questions, I like collision theory. Now this might be linked back to the practical, it might be like a practical six mark question altogether, or it might just be a separate one on its own, maybe linked to some maths, maybe linked to some diagrams. Other things that I like are things to do with fractional distillation and the organic chemistry. There are lots of things to do with crude oil. Now this could link to the fractional distillation or the cracking, or this could even link through to pollution, climate change and carbon. There are lots and lots of different things they could ask about this. Chemistry, the atmosphere and using resources, there is a big big shift towards um, social, ethical issues, um, issues to do with how human beings are impacting the world in the science specification, so I think this could be a really big area that they're going to test you on. There are a few key things you learnt in paper one that could still come up in paper two. For example, balancing equation, whilst it is in the paper one specification, they could easily still ask it in paper two, and you are still expected to be very familiar with how to use periodic table in paper two. So please don't forget everything just because we've finished paper one. We need to work on our graph skills, drawing graphs, interpreting graphs and using data in the questions. If you want to practice all this stuff then you can go and download the predictive paper from my website. Combined science people, good luck, I'm going to be here with you every single step of the way. Separate science people, we have a few more things to talk about. There is a lot more separate science only content in this paper compared to chemistry paper one, so it wouldn't be unreasonable for the example to focus this paper a lot more on the separate science topics. For example, the majority of the organic chemistry is only for separate science and the combined student students don't need to know it. So organic chemistry is a really, really key area you need to work on. I 
love organic chemistry but I know it is like a little bit of a marmite subject you either love it or you hate it a flame test came up last year but I would strongly suggest that you still know them as well as all the alternative tests and the tests for negative ions as well the harbour process is an example that is really really important in industry something they love asking questions about because while Chatelier's principle came up before for it is still relevant to this question and this paper so just because it's a paper one topic it doesn't mean they can't ask you about it in relation to the hub process good luck guys um i'm gonna be here with you every single step of the way um i am not stopping until you do ouch This is why in some videos I have unexplained scratches.